Right. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment, I can't find my tripod, so I'm going to have to do this handheld. What I'm uh, after doing is I'm after doing a bit of uh, a long distance walk this summer. Maybe the coast to coast, Wainwright's coast to coast from St. Bee's Head to uh, Robin and Hood's Bay, which goes through the Lake District across the Vale of York, which I did ooh, in 1989. Uh, and I fancy having another little go, see what it's like. I'm out at the tender age of 62. Um, but the rucksack I've got is a bit limited, plus the fact I get a sweaty back with it. It's limited by its size. So what I thought was, oh, um, I looked some YouTube videos. And there's a thing called a Roycroft pack, which was used in the 1800, either as a replacement for a broken pack frame or just to, to carry stuff on your back. And I thought, well, I can build one of those very easily. Um, so last, about this time last year, I went into a piece of woodland and I cut myself some saplings and a bit of dead wood and split it. And uh, that wood has seasoned over the uh, over the last year. And now I've put it together. Um, it was just a math, math, method of strapping it to me back, that was all. Uh, the ways that you see in the YouTube videos, they put, they put a a piece of rope which goes around the top of it's like a triangular frame and it put a piece of rope around that around the top of the frame and then bring it down explain bring it down over your chest then loop it around the base piece of wood and then tie it at the front and I thought well the only problem with that is is that uh, that's going to keep the back pressed again uh, the frame pressed against my back and whatever I've strapped to it is going to push onto my back and so I'm going to start the same problem with sweaty back. So this is what I did. Now normally uh, these would be lashed up at the joints. As you can see it's a triangular frame. I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over so you can see those side in a sec. Um, uh, what I did, so I got st roof stain, uh, well rust free roofing bolts which I could uh, tighten up to make the three, there's only three points, dead simple. Here we are. Put a cross member here. And uh, this is the, the piece of uh, the wood bits of duct tape. Uh, these bits here, the padding, which will take it away from me back, is uh, a piece of uh, foam kneeling pad, which uh, from a garden, gardening shop. Um, which only costs a, well, very little and I've just cut for, for basic padding. Now this here is my bum bag or fanny bag as the Americans call it. Uh, it's quite big, it's about oh, maybe about 12, 12 to 15 litres when it's expanded and it has a good uh, padded hip belt, two top, top straps to take a, a waterproof or whatever um, two bottle side bottle carriers neck bottle carriers uh, and because you can get a fair load into it it also has like a yoke on it uh, a simple yoke that uh, just goes over your shoulders uh, it also allows you to put the bottle carrier on here now uh, as you can see it's just simple nuts and bolts I've just filed them off and made them through so they don't catch uh, all there. Um, I'll also use the straps at the top of top of my walking pole. I've used them to further fix the belt on the back. I can also put stuff in there like uh, guiding pegs and tethering and what have you. Uh, other things I've done is I've put little loops on here which I use for making prussic loops so I, I can I can use that for attaching stuff on uh, because I'm going to be attaching it with the bungee cord which I use for guying my uh, my tarp or my ponchos I, I've, I'm taking two ponchos with me this is this is the uh, I'll just turn it this way you can see it full length 
that is basically the USGI poncho with the USG poncho liner which I will be using for kipping uh, I might take an extra sleeping bag depends how the weather is at the time if it's going down to about four or five degrees Celsius at night time I might take some extra or I'm gonna to have to sleep in clothing to keep warm they're all right to a certain degree but uh, you know uh, I might I might uh, just uh, get a sleeping bag liner to add to it I don't know but it's fairly lightweight I mean I'm guessing what a pound a couple of pounds at the most I'm guessing like a bag of sugar very lightweight good thing about the poncho liner is it dries out fast but it's uh, inside the uh, inside the poncho and I have another poncho inside here plus uh, a wind shirt um, which will go over a fleece uh, for, for me waterproof which will also be um, a tarpaulin or whatever uh, there are, the other thing I shall put on the back is this is a 40 litre dry sack so I can have my clothing in there whatever this is about 20 litres a uh, little sack which will go on top of that so I could go up to about 65 litres I'm guessing 40, at least 60 litres and then I've taken the uh, the little uh, side packs off my other rucksack so I can use those as well I've got my stove in there with my Stanley cup pot um, a little bit some pieces of uh, tools for chopping up wood for, for other bits and pieces basically so, just turn it back over again. You yeah, see, I've had this raid, a good little bottle carrier that. It, uh, it's insulated and if you pour water over it uh, on a hot day, it, uh, because the evaporation will uh, keep the aluminium SIG bottle cool, uh, which is very handy. The other thing this has here, when you're just using it as a handle bag you can put the straps in behind here but what I can do is if this is anywhere near me back I can push it out a bit further I mean I've got the foam padding underneath here next to the wood but there you go there's me cold weather cold weather uh, cap comforter there that can fit in there and uh, that just pushes the frame a little further out from me back so the air can get underneath this is what I'm after. Okay, the frame might be a, bit, a little bit more um, uh, unwieldy than a, a properly fitting, uh, a properly fitting uh, rucksack, but uh, it's, it's this getting the air through uh, without having to go to the expense of buying another rucksack. Uh, and I think this will uh, should work pretty well. The other thing that I can do is, you see, I've got. Uh, a brolly which comes in for well keep rain off or if it's a sunny day uh, that's the sleeping mat the fold up sleeping mat a pair of leather gloves leather gloves are very important if you for uh, handling hot pots and stuff like that because obviously they're not going to melt um, so those are always handy to have um, what I was going to mention yeah as you can see it's a fairly padded hip belt uh, adjustable clip clip away you go right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assemble it uh, oh I didn't say what the weight was I, th I think this is just uh, this frame with that on it uh, weighs about two kilograms is it two kilograms or four pound no it's not that much I think it's about it's about it's about one and a half kilogram I think I did weigh it I've forgotten I weighed it a bit ago so it's slight it is slightly heavier than a the normal rucksack but the thing is this gives me a lot more flexibility it's just whether i can get the comfort uh, anyway i'll uh, i'll put it all together and uh, you can see what it looks like right so here we are the uh, packed up pack frame uh, i'll just bring it in closer those uh, paracord loops and now holding that there a couple of elastic bands just hold it plus uh, the drawstring cord off the hood the cinch cord uh, the other loop there which uh, fastens it on 
bungees coming down from the top of the the frame. I'll oink it up. You can see it. Bungees hooked into the frame. That's holding that pack very securely. Uh, threaded through this the side pack loops there. Uh, and then those come down and hold the bottom part of it. These hook into the bum bag, stop that falling off. That won't go anywhere. Uh, so that's all very secure. Right, just a hikey door. Now, the, as you can see, um, it's also the right length. I can fix my uh, trekking pole to one side and uh, my umbrella goes on the other. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention is just to make uh, for a bit of extra comfort, uh, I don't particularly need padding. Uh, I just uh, got some some other webbing, uh, I think it's old wagon truck um, load webbing straps and just chopped them up and used my other faithful bits of uh, sliced bicycle in the tube to fix it on there so that just spreads the load a bit on my shoulders but most people don't know but those of us who do backpack know that carrying all the weight on your shoulders is not a good idea uh, when I want I want to be carrying about 10% 15% maximum on my shoulders uh, they're more just to hold the pack into you this is where the weight needs to be held when people call these a waist belt they're not they're the hip belt and you should be should be gripping your pelvic girdle the top of your where your your, your legs uh, your thigh bone joins onto your hip bone these should be clamping the hip bone uh, and you should be carrying 80 to 90 percent of the weight on that where your body's center of gravity is if you don't and you try to walk any distance over 10 to 12 miles you're going to have very sore shoulders as it stands now this pack weighs in at about uh, I'll say maybe 15 kilograms 30 pounds at the most I'm guessing which is quite not too, it's quite easy to handle over it once you start getting over about 30 pounds it, uh, it it slowed me down a lot when I, I have I mean I've walked with about double that weight on my back but, uh, but uh, not these days I try and keep as light as possible the only thing that's missing out of there, I mean I could walk out of here tonight, no problem at all. The only missing thing that's missing in there is some uh, some rations, that's all. I've got spare clothing, change of clothing, uh, dry clothing, I've got waterproofs, everything I need is in, in that bag. So now, because I haven't done any uh, a long distance trail for a long time, I'm going to uh, start carrying this out when I go out for a wander with the dog just to get used to carrying the weight again because I've done it for so many years over a long distance I and mean, I've been out for day walks and done more with like 10 miles or something like that but I haven't uh, I haven't uh, carried anything weight like that for uh, a considerable amount of time anyway at least 10 years so there it is and uh, as you can see with, as I say with the, put the form there air should be able to get through the sleeping bag plus this make do little crisscross of paracord I did on there stops the thing pushing through onto my back and hopefully I will have the ventilation. So there there you have it. Gordon's updated for the 21st century or whatever <laughs> bothered uh, Rykoff pack frame um, which uh, I'm hoping it will do me. If not, I'll. Uh, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm my next project. I'm thinking of making some. I fancy sticking with a natural, uh, sticking with a natural, and going uh, making a pack frame up of rather than using the uh, the UP, UPVC tubing, plumbing tubing, or electrical conduit that I've seen uh, on others to get it lighter. Uh, I think bamboo is the way to go because you can cut it, steam it, and bend it to shape. And then I could make it a more ergonomic shape to fit me back. But that's that, that's possibly the next project. But anyway, I'm just going to see how I go go on with this. And if if, I, if I'm not happy with it, then I'll uh, I'll go down the bamboo route and uh, make a frame up out of that. I think ready for me uh, summer trek. The next job is to try this out over the, the 15 mile walk and see how I feel feel about after afterwards. You know. <laughs> anyway, that's for now. Uh, for those of you fancying a cheap rucksack. 
Oh, you can't get much cheaper than that. You probably have existing gear which you could modify to fit on it, as I have done. Um, I think that's uh, not a bad do. Cheers for now.